Hey everyone, today I uh, I felt like talking about Punisher. One of my favorite comic book characters, my favorite Marvel characters. He had the best movies, aside from Deadpool, I guess. I'm not a big Marvel movie guy, but I like, I like Punisher a lot. Uh, I guess I'll start with my earliest memory is from the Spider-Man cartoon, the 90s one. There was an episode where Punisher shows up, uh, he mistakes Spider-Man for a bad guy, and in the end, it all works out, and they become uh, uneasy allies. Spider-Man doesn't approve of the way Punisher does things, and Punisher thinks Spider-Man doesn't do things what he should be doing. And then, uh, a few years later, I got a pack of comic books from a drugstore or something, and one of them in there was a Punisher War Journal comic. The other comics, there was a Spider-Man comic and Nova the Human Rocket. The Spider-Man one kind of bugged me because it didn't have a uh, an ending. It ends on a to-be-continued, and this is mid-90s. There's no comic book stores around. Trade paperbacks are impossible to find. eBay's not a thing yet. <laughs> so I was screwed. There's no way to know how it ended. The Punisher comic, though, really intrigued me. That was also like a story like in the middle of a really big ongoing story arc. Punisher, let's see, goes into this weird cult headquarters and is challenged by the head guy they get into this big fight and it was really cool and i didn't know anything about punisher other than what i had seen on the spider-man cartoon so all i knew was he was just some tough guy uh let's see his family was killed he uses guns a lot and that's about all i know about him the back of the comic had a really weird backup story with this gangster family I think they showed up later in the Punisher comic, but first they just had this odd backup story. It was really strange. But then anyway, uh, years later, I'd find a dollar store with a whole bunch of comics. They'd have like three packs of comics for sale, or sometimes four packs of comics. So that's where I started reading more Punisher comics. And then, uh, let's see, there was a bookstore that also sold comics occasionally, and I got some there. And I just... I really started liking the Punisher as a character, and then I found out there was a, I was at a yard sale, and I saw there was a VHS copy of the original movie that Dolph Lundgren won, but it was R-rated, and I was like uh, 11 or 12, so there's no way I'm going to see it. And then the 2004 movie came out uh, with Tom Jane, I have a, there it is, it's hard to see, I thought it'd show up better. There we go. Anyway, uh, I really like The Punisher, and I, I really wanted to see the movie, but again, R-rated, and I'm like 12, 13, 14, 15. But eventually, let's see, I had my own VCR. I could do whatever I wanted. I could watch whatever movies I wanted, and that's how I got, uh, let's see, I had a tape of this, of the Tom Jane one that I watched over and over and over and over again. And unfortunately, the tape was like an ex-rental, and it was really beat up in really bad shape. So it didn't last too long. And then I got the uh, extended cut, which I watched a million times because I really liked the movie. Unfortunately, I didn't really like the extended cut. I felt like the stuff they added in, or the stuff that technically was cut out of the original movie, it didn't really add anything to the movie. It was just, uh, just uncomfortable and weird. Uh, let's see, more Punisher stuff. Oh, the comics. I started getting into uh, the paperbacks, the trade paperbacks, the graphic novels. All oh, the shelf here is Punisher, some of this, some down there. And I have even more in my room. I have big long boxes full of Punisher comics. I have uh, nearly the entire run of the first couple of uh, volumes. Uh, let's see, there's the original, let's see, there's the five-issue miniseries, Circle of Blood, which you can get like anywhere as a paperback, hardcover. I have the hardcover one up there. They re-released it in the Epic Collection for some reason because I guess it's hard to find. You know, it's weird. I had heard of Circle of Blood, but I didn't read it until I got the, the paperback of it, and now I have a hardcover. I didn't really care for that one that much. <laughs> oh, and I have a couple of the Punisher Essential Collections and more paperbacks over there on a wire rack, and it was in the Essential Collections. Oh, and also the Punisher magazine, which is over there. It was black and white reprints of the comics. I have a lot of Punisher stuff. Oddly, I don't have any Punisher toys or anything. 
Like, I had a, a Marvel Legends figure of the Tom Jane Punisher, which, uh, let's see, I... Do I still have that? I don't know if I still have that. I lost the, uh, the jacket. The guns are long gone. I saw the comic, I think, somewhere. I'm sure I saw the comic. <laughs> I might have given away the toy or something. I don't know. I don't remember. Oh, yeah, there was also a Punisher video game. Uh, but anyway, back to the comics. Let's see. There's uh, the Circle of Blood, then... The first, like, ongoing series always said Volume 2 in the technical stuff at the bottom of the first page. And then there was a War Journal, War Zone 2099, and then the Marvel Edge comics, and uh, that series. That I have all that series. And, uh, let's see, oh, Marvel Knights came next. The first Marvel Knights, the real one, which is now called Punisher Purgatory, where he becomes an avenging angel of death. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I liked it. It was stupid, and I definitely didn't like where it went eventually, but at the beginning I was like, eh, this, this is kind of interesting. Like, it's unique. I definitely didn't see it lasting forever. If it did, then I would definitely have a problem. <laughs> anyway, let's see, after that was uh, the Marvel Knights that everybody knows, uh, the Garth Ennis ones with Steve Dillon artwork, Tim Bradstreet covers, and all that good stuff. <laughs> I really like those early Marvel Knights and the later Marvel Knights Punisher is also really cool. And that led into the Max series, which I got back there. And that led into Punisher Max, which was uh, Jason Aaron, I think. Yep, Jason Aaron as the writer. Those were weird. And uh, they're especially strange because at f first it just starts up like it's more Max comics. But then it becomes very clear this is a very different story. Uh, going off in its own direction, and that's fine. I really liked Bullseye in that. That was awesome. Oh, and it was... Let's see. I didn't see the other Punisher movies for a while. I saw the 2004 one first, and then a while later is when I would see uh, the original one, the Dolph Lundgren one. I liked it. It's a standard action movie. There's not really too much to it. Like, it's, it's a fun flick. I, there's some parts of it I really like, and it helps. I just, I really like Punisher, so even though I'm not a big action movie fan, I can still get into it. And then, years later, I found the Australian Blu-ray, which I'll uh, try to... Oh, from Umbrella Entertainment. Now, this was a really cool thing, because it has a, an extended director's cut version. There's a commentary with the director. There's a gag reel that doesn't work. From what I can understand on any copy of uh, this, even in Australia, or... I think it was Australia where this came from. Oh, and that's a weird thing. Let's see, it's a Blu-ray, and it says Region B, but it'll play on Region A Blu-ray players. That's not why the gag reel doesn't work, it's just... I don't know why. It's a defective gag reel. Maybe someone out there has one that where, where it does work. Anyway, I really like the Dolph Lundgren movie. The 2004 Tom Jane ones, though, still my favorite. And then, let's see, there's the extended cut of that. And then there's uh, Warzone, the movie. Let's see, Warzone, I first saw part of it on TV. But the TV was really bad. It was like an older TV. The screen is really dark. The movie's already, like, mostly at night. And uh, what was it? it was right after the switch to digital. And it was all glitchy in parts because it was raining. So, uh, yeah, I didn't watch it all the way through. But then years later I found, uh, let's see, the DVD, then I got the Blu-ray. Let's see, I, I didn't really like it that much at first. I was like, eh, it's just mindless violence, I don't really care, there's no story. Like, some of it's kind of... Inter I didn't really like Jigsaw at first, because I thought he was a little too hammy. Then later I got the Blu-ray with the commentary track, and let's see, I watched it again. I liked it a little bit better the second time around than I watched it with the commentary. Uh, the people doing the commentary are really boring in that movie. Uh, so much of it just feels like this was just standard, like, oh, this is go to work, shoot a movie, blah, blah, blah. That's what it felt like uh, when they were talking about working on the movie. It just felt like this was just a job. Whereas when I hear the director of the original Punisher, he's so enthusiastic and he loves the movie. And the 2004 movie... Again, the creators were so enthusiastic and loved everything about it. They thought they were 
like really making a great movie. And they did make a great movie. It was a really great uh, movie. And I can imagine it was a really personal movie for everyone involved. That was something with Warzone. It just didn't feel like it was a like a personal movie for everyone. Like maybe some of the bad guys are friends afterwards in the movie. I don't know. Because the bad guys were the best part of Warzone. Jigsaw. I didn't really like Jigsaw in the comic. I don't know if that's an unpopular opinion with Punisher fans. Because when it comes to fandoms, I'm kind of out of the loop on it. I always come in late. Or like a little bit late. Or I'm isolated and I don't know where the fans are. Like with My Old Pony, I got in somewhere like in the middle of season two, but I just didn't really know where the fans were. So it wasn't until like season four or five that I really started interacting with the fans and I started learning more of like what was considered like, you know, like in jokes and what's popular, what's unpopular opinions. So for Punisher, I don't know what people think of Jigsaw. Do they like him? Do they hate him? Like, I'm kind of sick of him. I liked him initially, he was an interesting character, but he was a, like a one-off character. And I vote, my thinking has always been, the problem with really good Punisher villains is they're not going to be around long because Punisher's going to kill them. If they don't get killed right away, then they're a little too much like a comic book villain, and so they're not threatening because it's in fantasy now. I know that they're not going to hurt Punisher. I know that even if Punisher kills them, they're going to come back to life like Jigsaw has. But anyway, in Warzone, I really love the way they brought him to life. I mean, if you're going to do Jigsaw in live action, this is perfect. I especially love how they did his eye. That was brilliant. And his actor, yeah, he hams it up, but it works for the movie. And I like his uh, sidekicks. They're really awesome. And each movie has a great quote. In the first movie with Dolph Lundgren, my favorite thing is at the end when he's talking to the little kid. What was his name? Billy or whatever. I can't remember what his name was. You're a good boy. Grow up and be a good man. Because if not, I'll be waiting. <laughs> I love that. And then the 2004 Punisher. I can't even decide. There's too many. But one of the ones I really like, and I even drew a, a little comic version of it for DeviantArt, was uh, the scene where uh, Punisher and Howard Saint have that uh, face down in the parking lot. Howard Saint turns around, You! You killed my son! And Punisher, let's see, you hear the explosion in the building behind him, and you hear, No! And then Punisher goes, Both of them. <laughs> That's awesome. And in Warzone, the best line wasn't necessarily from Punisher, it was from... Jigsaw's uh, buddy who was uh, getting abused by this doctor in a mental hospital who kept stealing his food. And so Jigsaw sets him loose and the guy says, I'm going to get my applesauce back. <laughs> and how was it? He says, did you know that kidney and applesauce is a delicacy in Sweden? <laughs> And then he, like, it's right up in the the guy's face and goes, yummy, yummy, yummy in my tummy, tummy, tummy. <laughs> it's ridiculous, but it fits the movie at that point. The scene at the end, uh, like, is the one scene a lot of people kind of like. I don't know, I kind of thought it was too cheesy where Puncher kills Jigsaw and he says, let me put you out of my misery and s impales him on the spiky thing. Yeah. Oh, but then we got, let's see, the Netflix show with John Bernthal. Oh, actually, let me talk a little bit about before the the Netflix show, there was another movie with Punisher in it, or there was a couple. There was Iron Man Rise of the Technivores, which I haven't seen yet. I kind of want to see it. The one thing that's held me back was I haven't been impressed with the Marvel anime things. I saw the uh, Wolverine anime. It was okay. Omega Red was the best part. The rest was just kind of meh. And then the X-Men anime was... Just, I'm so... Yeah. I did not like the X-Men anime. <laughs> and... See, Iron Man Rise of Technovores... I think it was Madman Entertainment who did it. Or Madman Studios. Or Madhouse. That was the name of the studio. Madhouse Studios. I don't care for their anime. Anyway, that's the one thing that's holding me back from Iron Man Rise of the Technovores... Maybe it's good. Oh, and uh, Punisher was also in uh, Superhero Squad, voiced by Ray Stevenson from the Warzone movie, so that's pretty cool that the 
Punisher who spoke the least did the voice in a cartoon, whatever. And then, um, oh, that's something. I could talk about the, uh, let's see, Tom Jane actually did come back to play Punisher in a fan-made short called Dirty Laundry, done by the guy who also did that one really terrible Power Ranger fan film that I hate and I don't want to talk about anymore. <laughs> um, uh, let's see, where was I? Oh yeah, I was talking about, um, the different movies. Avengers Confidential, Black Widow, and Punisher. I didn't care for it. It was okay for a movie, but it was definitely more for Avengers fans than Punisher fans. Punisher just kind of felt unnecessary in the movie. There's a few cool scenes in it, but for the most part, it was forgettable. And it's the only piece of Punisher media, like aside from the toy that I had, that I've given away. Everything else I've kept, good, bad, whatever, I've kept it. Or I've, like, traded in for for paperbacks. Like, the individual comics, if I had all of them, I would trade them in for a paperback sometimes. Anyway. Let's see. The DVDs. Oh, here's a weird thing. There was a another Punisher fan movie that I have. Punisher First Round. Starring a bunch of people I don't know. Oh yeah, Punisher vs. Wolverine. Wolverine shows up at the end. The whole movie is just these gangsters are uh, getting together to play cards. And let's see, Punisher comes in, shoots a bunch of them, Wolverine shows up, they start to fight, and then mo movie's over. It's like 15 minutes long, I think. It's a really short fan movie that got a DVD somehow. I think it was a like a Comic-Con giveaway or something. Anyway. Oh, John Bernthal show. I really, really liked it. Now, I remember when it was coming out, I had some reservations. Like, I was kind of disappointed that they weren't using any of the previous Punisher actors. Uh, Dolph Lundgren, obviously, I think would be too old by this point. But Tom Jane and Ray Stevenson would have been great to use. In fact, Ray Stevenson was in, uh, was it the Thor movies? He plays Volstagg, I think. So, anyway, I, I wasn't familiar with John Bernthal. I didn't really care for, like, his look. I didn't think he looked like Punisher, but then, like, once I saw him, like, in the show, then I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, he does, he, he's a great Punisher. He has a great energy, a really intense, intense Punisher. Let's see, the, the ongoing story, though, was kind of weird, because it didn't follow the comic. It really did its own thing. Micro's in there. Oh, Micro. I can talk about Micro. Micro is one of my favorite characters, and his son, too. Who unfortunately dies like uh, like three issues after his introduction. Huh, that stinks. Micro is always left out of the movies. In the Dolph Lundgren movie, we had a guy named Shakes. Uh, Tom Jane Punisher didn't really have a sidekick. Then Warzone, they did have Micro, played by uh, what's it, Wayne Knight, who is amazing. Like one, of my favorite thing in Warzone, Micro. I might have said Jigsaw was my favorite, but no, it's Micro. Micro was awesome in that movie. Wayne Knight was perfect. Like, I can't imagine better casting than that. And unfortunately, he dies at the end. So, even if there had been a sequel, he wouldn't have been in it, probably, unless they brought him back to life. Huh. <laughs> anyway, in the John Bernthal show, we do have a Micro who's nothing like Micro. He's not fat or even slightly overweight. He has a beard... Uh, he doesn't wear glasses often, if ever. I can't remember. He has curly hair. Like, he's a computer hacker, and that's about where the similarities between him and Micro begin and end. I'm guessing they wrote the character, and then they were like, well, we gotta call him Micro, otherwise fans will wonder why we didn't call him Micro. Kind of like Shakes in the Dolph Lundgren movie. He's not really that similar to Micro, but he's a sidekick to Punisher, so they might as well have called him Micro. Anyway, the other thing is Billy Russo. Now, a lot of people, like I was following online while the show was coming out, a lot of fans weren't aware of the comic book. So they didn't know who Billy Russo was. Billy Russo is a uh, jigsaw. Uh, too late for spoilers now. <laughs> anyway, so, so I knew it was coming. I knew at some point Billy Russo's face is going to get messed up. And in the last episode, that's when it happens. He betrays Frank. And Frank smashes his face into a mirror a bunch of times. And I, remember, and I was thinking, oh, yep, makes sense. But the intensity of the moment was kind of uh, dulled to me because I knew it was coming. 
I just didn't know how it was going to happen. And I remember reading a review, someone was saying that, oh man, that was so horrible and violent, I can't believe they resorted to such gratuitous violence. <laughs> Even though it, it's the Punisher, it's going to be violent. Why, why do people go to see an R-rated Punisher thing, or this uh, TVMA thing, and they're like, oh, I can't believe that was so violent. It's a guy with guns, what do you expect? <laughs> it, so... Let's see. Oh, and then it got a season two, which I got somewhere. Oh, there it is. My custom Blu-ray cover there. Oh, and the second season is where Billy Russo becomes Jigsaw. And I remember seeing the uh, behind-the-scenes pictures that came out a little bit before the series. And it shows him with, like, these old cat scratches on his face. And I was like, well, that can't possibly be the makeup they're going with. They're going to, like, green screen in more makeup later, right? No, no they don't. <laughs> he has those cat scratches on his face, and that's supposed to be Jigsaw. I was really disappointed at first, but then I saw the show, and how they handle him, it works. But it's the same problem I had with Micro, is they should have just made him a different character. It didn't have to be Jigsaw. This could have like just been an original villain for the show. I don't know why they didn't just do that. Oh well, I'm... Guessing they probably didn't even know where they were going with it when they wrote him in initially, probably. So anyway, the show, it works, and he's a great character. The cat scratch thing is kind of silly in the context of the show. Uh, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see, more Punisher stuff. Oh, I can talk about 2099. Now, Punisher 2099 isn't very popular, but I freaking loved it. Uh, it's really weird. Let's see, it's in the future, we have this uh, big buff guy, Jake Gallows, not Frank Castle, and uh, let's see, his family's murdered by these crazy psychos, he hunts them down, and after that he's uh, hunting down other criminals, and he's locking them up in these uh, like sci-fi tubes he has in his basement. Oh, and he has a buddy, what was his name, Matt, I think was his friend's name? He had a friend with, like, frizzy orange hair named Matt, I think, in that series. Let's see. Oh, and he eventually joins S.H.I.E.L.D. I can't remember. S.H.I.E.L.D. is corrupt or something in the future. I can't remember. I haven't read all of 2099 since... a while. <laughs> Let's see. More Punisher stuff. No, I think that just about covers uh, all the Punisher stuff. After Season 2 of... Uh, the John Bernthal show, it got uh, cancelled, kind of, sort of, but I keep hearing rumors about he's going to come back in one of the Marvel movies, or he's going to get another show on, like, a Disney Plus or something. Let's see, and the, and the comics, I haven't been keeping up with the newest comics, but I did get the uh, War of the Realms comics, and those were lots of fun. Let's see, there's another comic called Savage Avengers that Punisher is in. I haven't gotten though, not the, not the, bleh, I haven't gotten that yet. Stutter. Ah, oh, what else? Hmm. <laughs> I can't think of anything else. Guess I'll end it here. See ya.